What's up, guys? Today was a long day. And I am ready for a shower. I am ready for another bowl. I'm ready for a lot right now. Anyway, sorry. Um, so, rough day today. Work was horrible. It was so hot in this attic space I was working in. <sighs> Guys, this was rough. This was rough. About 10 minutes after I made that video today, within about 20 minutes of after I've uploaded that video, I was drenched in sweat, like drenched, like soaking wet, drenched. I never been more wet in my entire life. My boss thought somebody soaked me with a water hose. Like they, like she laughed at first. It was brutal, guys. I want to tell you what I was doing. You want to know? <laughs> it was so much fun. So there was a flat roof and they built a peaked roof over it and they didn't seal it off properly. So pigeons have been in there for like the last 15 years. Uh, what's worse, coronaviruses or bird flus? I went and got a full face rest. That little N95 wasn't cutting it. Fucking full face resto. Fucking rich. You're gonna fucking rear end him, dude. Jesus. And you got a driver's side taillight out. I gotta tell that guy, you don't get pulled over. Um. Oh, my lips. They just taste like sweat. Like salty. My whole body is soaked. Anyway, let's talk about what happened this morning. Because this is extremely important. Okay. You know how like you'll have like a, a road and there will be like a turning lane off of that road so you can slow down, make a right turn without affecting the flow of traffic on the highway. There is a cop. There is a sheriff, a deputy sheriff, a sheriff's deputy, sorry, who sits in that turning lane. About a third, now it is a long turning lane, I'll give them that, okay? <laughs> I'll give them that. It's a longer turning lane than just like your quick little whoop, turn off, okay? But nonetheless, he's sitting in the fucking turning lane. And he sits in this turning lane all of the time. Now, you're up, dude. Figure it out. It's a fucking four-way. See, this is me not being positive. Check yourself. So, this dude, anyway, this dude, this cop parks in this, in this turning lane all the time. This has been going on for like months. And I like, I've come close a few times and I've like tried to like fucking come as close as I can to his vehicle to hit it without hitting it. Just to be like, you know, Get out of the fucking turning lane, dude. You're in a turning lane. So, this is what I did. I hit that turning lane. I parked behind him. He wouldn't fucking move for a second. So, I pulled up next to him. I said, hey, you're in a turning lane. And at this point, I am half in the turning lane. Mostly, I'm not even in the turning lane anymore. Like, maybe my tires are on the white line. But the driver's side of the whole vehicle was still in traffic on a highway on US 41 where there is traffic so I said hey you're in a turning lane and I pulled forward into the gas station right into the gas station and um, 
started pumping my gas. While my gas is pumping, I walk back out to the road. I'm standing in the turning lane. I'm staring at the cop. I take a picture of his vehicle. Then I walk back to the car, wait for it to get done pumping. I had no service. For whatever reason, I had zero service at the, in this moment. I couldn't look up what the... I was trying to look up the county sheriff's number, and I couldn't find it. Because I didn't have fucking service. It wasn't nothing, nothing was loading, right? So... My coworker's like, I got it right here. It's blah, 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 blah. I'm like, perfect. Thank you. So I'm like, they said, they're not open until nine though. I'm like, all right, well, I got, I got the fucking time, dude. I'm getting tired of this shit. I'm tired of this fucking guy. So one thing that pisses me off. Oh shit. Damn. So one thing that pisses me off right off the rip when I see these guys is they recently tinted all their windows, all their front windows on all the cop cars. I don't know if state cops are like this yet. But all the sheriff cars, all the township cops, all the city cops, they all are fucking blacked out windows now. They were never like this a couple few months ago. It may, uh, it's probably been about a, I'm sorry, it's been about a year. It's, you know, COVID caused a lot of blur in time there. A lot of shit melted. A lot of years kind of melted together. So I guess it's been about a year. And I'm going to pass this guy. Sorry. Big old mine truck. Um, so, so that, when I see these cops, I immediately get pissed off. Because I'll tell you why, in the state of Michigan, it is illegal for me to tint my fucking front windows. I'm allowed to have a four inch thing from the top to the bottom. Basically a visor. I'm allowed to have a four inch window visor. You ever heard of something so fucking stupid in your life? So I thought, you know what? I ain't gonna bitch about it too much. When I first moved up here from Texas, see, I, um, oh yeah, I never posted the video I made this morning. I'll post that one after this. So, when I first moved up here from Texas, I had 5% tint on all my windows, right? I got pulled over by the state cops, and they're like, hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't know if you're aware. The, you know, blah, you know, fucking, whoa, 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 okay? So, I'm like, whatever, dude. Go fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> He's like, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, we laughed. And then this fucking cop pulls me over. About two weeks later, he pulls me over again. Then he says, Did I pull you over a few weeks ago? I'm like, yeah, you sure did. I thought I did. So, um, have you looked into removing this tint at all in the front windows? I said, nope, not at all. Huh. Then you bought it like this. I said, yeah. Where at? I said, in Texas, where it's legal. To tint your windows because the sun is bright. Why would you want it heating up your car? No matter where you're at. He says, all right, well, you kind of thought about it for a minute. He's like, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're either going to peel it off right now or I'm going to write you a ticket every time I see you. <laughs> I'm like, ah, you fucker. You have me by the balls. That is the law. As stupid as it is, that's what it is. It's up to me to change it. Me bitching to him about it, and he can do nothing. So guess what we did? He grabbed a knife, we peeled a corner, we peeled the fucking tape, we peeled the fucking tent off, and for the second time, he did not give me a ticket. I am way off fucking subject. See how I digress so much? So, immediately, as soon as I see these cops, I get pissed. Hey. Small town living. Hey, guy. <laughs> All these waves and hellos. So, um... So I immediately kind of get upset. Because, um... Because they're... T they're sorry, I look like there are people at my house. I was like, who's at my house? <laughs> um... Is there people at my house? Wait, I don't know. Hold on a second, guys. Oh, no. The neighbors... Did uh, 
put like that jet black. Oh no, that's at, that's at my fucking house. Who the fuck is this? In an Audi? Hmm. Wisconsin. Wisconsin plates in an Audi. Dude's walking out to it right now from the neighbor's house. I'm gonna park in front of someone else's house, homeboy. The vehicle parks right there in about 20 minutes. It's fucking walking out looking at me like fucking tough. Get fucked up around here, bro. Almost forgot I was recording. Ah, oh, relaxing. All right, so anyway, so we're 11 minutes in and I haven't even told you what happened. All right, so. Um, so I finished pumping my gas. So I walk out, I take a picture of his car clearly in the turning lane. Normally he parks with his right rear, his, his, his passenger rear tire on the sidewalk because that because that helps at all so anyway I'm, i finished pumping my gas and i think to myself well yeah my phone didn't have service so i couldn't do anything so i reset my phone and all of a sudden i got service this is what this is what's fucked up about m- me and my generation my generation is kind of known like i'm a millennial right i don't like to admit it but by their standards i by their standards i'm i'm a millennial okay Crack this window so I can hear shit. Um, listen to that. Can't hear nothing. Love it. So by their standards, I'm a millennial, okay? Um, well, the millennial generation is the generation known for immediately, without even second, giving it a second thought, pulling out their phones and recording. That's what they do. I don't do that. I need to train myself to do these things because guess what I didn't fucking do? Record my interaction with the sheriff. And that should have been the first thing that came to my mind because it was the first thing that came to my mind when I was done talking to him. So I thought, you know what? Fuck this, dude. I'm not going to be some piece of shit like he is. I'm not going to sit here on the side of the road. He's a piece of shit for these reasons. He's sitting on the side of the road extorting people going to work in the morning. What a piece of shit. So I said, all right, man, you know what? I'll tell you why I did what I did, too. So I, pu- I got done pumping gas. I pulled around the store, parked over here near him. I walked over there. I walked up to his passenger side window. Asked him to roll it down. Over here. Asked him to roll it down for me. I did it over here. You couldn't see. Um, he rolled it down. He said, how you doing? I said, not bad, man. I said, you know you're in a turning lane, right? And his excuse to me was... Yeah, the, the the reason being is we have a lot of incidents here, incident, incidents in at this intersection. Well, you know, I live there. I'm well aware of the accidents that sometimes happen at that intersection. That intersection is like three buildings down from my shop. So it's not like an intersection that I not frequent at, okay? I've seen accident. I've seen a drunk driver full tilt smoke the fucking rear end of somebody's car. They had two kids in the back seat that were stopped. There's my neighbor. He's coming out. Probably, what the fuck is he doing over there? So, um, where was I? Where was I? Okay, so I'm talking to the cop. I said, he rolls his window down. I said, hey, man, and this is why I need to record these fucking conversations because. You know, you get nervous talking to cops. Man, if you don't, I get nervous talking to cops. Just like anybody who's ever been in trouble, man. I've been in a lot of fucking trouble in my life. I've been in too much trouble in my life. There is like one or two things I I, I wish I would have done differently. (laughs) But other than that, I don't regret any of it. Um, so I'm nervous, dude. My fucking heart's beating. I'm like, fuck this, dude. So I'm talking to this cop. Man, people are pulling up all, all around and shit. 
So I'm talking to this cop anyway. And um, I tell him, you know, he said the reason being is there's a lot of incidents that happen in this uh, at this intersection. And I said, well, the issue I have with that I'm listening to people. Sorry. So anyway, so I'm going to make this quick. I saw, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So um, I said, uh, where are we? As soon as he started to say that shit, I, I pretty much cut him off. And I said, well, the problem is you're blocking the turning lane and you're making me disobey the traffic tools in place, which is that white line right there. That white line is considered a traffic tool, okay? It is a tool used to control the flow of traffic. It's a traffic tool. I said, you're blocking. I said, and now I'm having to disobey the law by going around that traffic tool, by crossing that traffic tool, which is the white line, and putting myself back in danger of people who are coming 50 miles an hour up this road, up on top of this hill. It sits right on top of a hill. Man, up oh, there he is. Hello. Straight away the other way, but if you're coming from my way, and I'm looking at my rear view, it may look like it's clear. I go to pull back out, and then a car is boom right there on my fucking ass. And so I said that. And I said, um, I said, you know, because, and I, I said, now I'm having to do, I have to put myself back in danger to cars doing 50 miles an hour up over this hill here, just so I can go around you so I can make the turn properly, legally, like I'm supposed to. Okay. Because, of, and I said, and if I was sitting right here, man, he said something, he started to say something and I don't remember. And I just cut him off. I said, no, dude, because if I was sitting right here, then you would 100% come fuck with me. So I have to come talk to you, dude. That's just how it goes. And so he says, all right. I said, um, you know, I said, I said, that's just how it goes. I said, I said, I said, if I'm accountable to the law, you have to be just as accountable, my friend. And he goes, okay, I get it, man. I get it. I, I apologize. And I'm sorry. And, uh, and I stopped and I said, I'm not trying to be an asshole, dude. I didn't come over here to be a dickhead to you. Okay. I said, I respect our sheriff. I don't respect our sheriff. I didn't say I respect our sheriff. I said, I believe in our sheriff. I said, okay. I said, I didn't come over here to be an asshole. I didn't come over here to be some dickhead, dude. Tell you how to do your job. I said, I believe in our sheriff, okay? I believe in the rights he had. I didn't say, I wanted to say, I believe the, I thought about it after I left. I was like, I should have said, I believe in the authority. I, I believe in his, I believe in his position. I believe in the position of a sheriff. Oh, maybe I see this dude again. I get to talk to him a little bit more. But I said, I believe, I said, I believe in our sheriff. I'm not just some guy. And he said, okay. He goes, I thank you, man. Thank you. And I apologize again. And he drove off. And, um, you know what that was? That was power. That was knowledge is power. Okay. Knowledge is power. And when you're armed with the right knowledge, there's no need to get all flustered. Like I was. I was so flustered. And I thought, man, I don't know the law verbatim. I don't know. I know enough. I know legally enough that this dude can't sit here in a fucking turning lane three out of five mornings. God, it pisses me off so much. It pisses me off when cops park and hide to extort people anyway. Anytime I see a cop on the side of the road watching for people, I fucking get so irate. Immediately, my blood boils. Look at this piece of shit. I get so upset. So, that felt good, though. It felt good to interact with this guy, right? He's going to remember who I am. And if he doesn't and I see him in public, I'm going to remind him who I am. And I hope we can have a better conversation next time. I'll tell you why I did what I did. I have been watching LaVoy Finnicum's YouTube page um, a lot lately. There's fucking 20 playlists on his page. And they are good. And this, the way this man holds himself, the way this man... Um, the way he speaks, the way he holds himself, his whole demeanor, his attitude, 
is knowledge. Um, I truly aspire to be somebody more like him, more in the sense of who he was. Truly, I don't just say that because I respect the person. I respect him to the extent that we, that in which it hurts my heart that they did this man how they did him. It hurts even more so that not a single person stood up afterwards. I'll leave a link. There's a militia member in a talk talking about how we need to stand together, but it takes someone to stand in order for others to stand with them. And he said, Lavoy Finnegan was that man, and they're going to kill Lavoy, talking the feds, if we do not stand with him. And guess what happened, man? This dude took a constitutional stand, and they shot him in the back three times. I get so pissed when I think about that too, man. This man, this is a great, this is a true American hero, patriot. I don't know who I like more, Thomas Jefferson or Lavoy Finnegan. Robert Lavoy Finnegan, look him up if you don't know anything about him. Who knows what the, who knows what the internet will tell you about him. Go to his face, go to his YouTube. He documented everything. So smart, see, smart. He documented all his problems with the federal government. The BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. I'm going to leave a link um, to, I think, something that's good. He spoke at like a conference, a cowboy conference. A couple militia members spoke after him. Uh, I'll leave the link to that. Incredible knowledge. Um, but this dude's a wise man. He's a wise person. And even in the face of the agents that he would encounter on his ranch and make videos about it or record it, he was never ignorant. He was never disrespectful. He was never ignorant to these people. He never cussed at these people. He always held his own and he always held his integrity as a person, as who he was. He didn't believe, he said, I don't believe in being ignorant. I don't believe in being disrespectful to people. And I thought about that as I was finished pumping gas. It takes me a minute to like calm down and reflect. Is this, the, is this what I should be doing? Because in the moment, I get too heated. I make bad decisions in the moment. You know, I make decisions, decisions that like usually legally fuck me later. <laughs> I'm a hothead. I'm learning though. I used to be a hothead. I'm going to say I'm not a hothead anymore. I used to be a big hothead. A lot of shit. Look at this. My mask. That respirator had my fucking beard all like this. I used to be super bad, guys, super bad. Patience is something that is is coming so slow to me, but I'm striving for so much more. So it's it's it's, it's there. It's getting there. I made huge. Anyway, um, just do that. You hold a lot of power in knowledge and in a calm way to deliver that message. So this is probably one of the longer videos I've ever made. I'm sorry. I digress so much. I felt like there was a little bit of context and I kept going off the ball, but I repeated the same thing 20 fucking times. I'm going to go inside and shower. I stink so bad. My shirt, I could wring it out. There wasn't a dry spot on my shirt. Three separate times. It's dry now. Say the last time, my fourth trip up there doing what I was doing was... um wasn't bad it was quick so i only had like a patch <laughs> but we take 20 minutes break and go dry out um anyway that's it i have to remember to record my interactions with the police i want to talk to that guy again that cop probably called me a fucking douchebag the second he drove off and that's okay and that's okay. Hope I see him again. We could talk some more. Our current sheriff is a piece of shit. Sorry. His name is Sheriff Zybert. Super hardcore liberal. He I don't know if he stands for much. Somebody stole his cop car not long ago. 
He left the keys fucking running, left the keys in it running. Denver locked it or whatever. I mean, I'm sweating like a pig right now, dude. Look at my look at my arm. You see that? That is like water dripping down my arm. So I'm gonna let you guys go. Um I love you all dearly. Thanks for being here. Your positivity helps to boost my positivity. You know, I'm not always a positive person, though I try to be. And that's why I say positivity breeds positivity. It's hard to be around somebody who's happy and joyful and be like cranky and miserable. So spread positivity. It breeds positivity. Spread love. Um, drink craft beer. And, um, you know, and do you without anybody, without letting anybody get over on you. You hold a lot of power, guys. We are the people of this nation. I need to understand the Constitution far more than I do. We hold mass amounts of power. Our sheriff holds mass amounts of power. That's it. Peace, guys. Later.